learning some vocabulary words today. It's like, crap. The, the phrase that I would like you to write is this, okay? Why varies directly with F. Whenever you see these words in a word problem, Y varies directly with F. I want you to understand it's talking about one thing and one thing only. What's it talking about, everybody? Direct variation. Direct variation. Very good. So here's the here's the equation that goes with the direct variation. Y equals KX. What in the world is K? Well, basically, it's called the constant. of variation. Now, there's another alias that this constant of variation goes by. That k value is basically what's called the slope of the line. Okay? But what do they call it? They call it the constant of variation. And they do this specifically because all of these lines will pass through one number. It always passes through something. Let's see what it always passes through. Let's look at, look at our problem. Okay, look at problem number one, problem number two, problem number three. What is it, don't you? Zero. Zero, zero. And what, yes, that's right. So what does it always pass through? It always passes through the, that's right. So put origin, and put zero, comma, zero. So what is the first point you're always going to plot on direct variation? Zero, zero. Where should you always start on direct variation? At the origin. You start at the beginning. What's another word for the beginning? The origin. Okay? So right now, if we look at this, what is the k value? It's the constant of variation, but what does that basically mean? It's the constant rate of change, also known as the slope. So this is really, it's, it's not much difficult. It's not much difficult. This is easier than slope-intercept form. Why is it easier than slope-intercept form? Because right now, what's the only thing we have to worry about? Just the slope. Where do we know the y-intercept's going to be? At 0, 0. What's the x-intercept going to be? 0, 0. Okay? So let's go to our first problem. Alright, here we go. On these questions, name the constant of variation for each equation, then determine the slope of the line that passes through each pair of when I tell you the constant of variation is already mean? It's already p equals to the what? The slope. That's kind of a ridiculous question, but we're going to answer it anyways. Huh. Wow, they really gave us a lot, didn't they? Oops. Did we see that number right there? What is our k value in that equation? One third. One third. What's our slope equal to? That's it. One third. They mean the same thing. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to make things confusing. I want you to understand it means the same thing. Here's what I want you to do on your paper. I want you to shade up one and shade over how many? Three. So I want you to go up one and shade over three. That's it. Right now. Show me that you know how to go up one and over three. Remember, the slope is the change in the y over change in the x. And what is our slope? One third. What does a one third slope look like? It looks like this. How do we read slope? We read it from the left to the right. That's it. And it's a positive slope, so do that. Alright, we are moving on to number two. Alright? Alright, who here would feel comfortable telling me what the k value is in this pro Oh, Christian! Negative two is wrong. Right there, look, it's right there too. Look, it says what? Y is equal to negative 2x. I'm sorry for blocking the detail. All right, so what does that tell us about our slope, Devani? What is our slope? Yeah, negative 2, because the k value is the constant of variation, which is the slope. Now, the last thing I want you to do this time, if my slope is a negative 2 basically over 1, which means I need to go down two units and over one to the right. So from the origin, so I'll plot it in green so you can see a little easier. From 
about the origin right there. What do I want you to do? I want you to go down to and over one, and then I want you to shade that in. I want you to shade it down to over one, and that represents the steepness, the constant rate of change, the slope of that Who's on about the tree? There we go. All right. Any volunteers to the K value? Go ahead, up square. Negative three. Oh, that's a horrible. Negative three over two. All right. And what does that mean? Our slope is also equal to. Just put just put K equals. Now, what are we used to seeing? What letter are we used to seeing? Are we seeing like the letter M? Y equals, you guys are used to this, right? You're used to what? Y equals MX plus B. But in the constant variation, what's the B value always equal to? Zero. It's always equal to zero. So now, what, all we've done is, we, what if we replace M with? We just replaced it with the letter K. All right, that's it. All right, so we're going to go down three, and we're going to go over to the right two. So from right here, we're going to put a point right here. Where do we start? At zero, zero. We're going to go down three units, and over two units, and put another point. And then we're going to shade it down three. And that's your answer. What's our k value? What's our constant of variation? Negative three over two. What's our slope? They mean the same thing. The reason why I'm saying it multiple times, I want you guys to understand when it says it, I don't want you to be confused. I want you to automatically recognize that the constant of variation just means slope. Okay? Versus you looking at it going, what are they asking me to find? Okay? All right, here we go. Number four, what's it ask you to do? Graph each equation. Can anybody tell me? Who here wants to tell me the K value in number Four. Besides L, but Lord, three, which means what is my slope? Three. Three. But this time I'm going to put three over one, which means I got to go up three units and over oh, one to the right. Does anybody know where I'm going to start? Yeah, right there, the origin. Put a point right there. Now, what am I going to do now? I'm going to go up. Three and over one. Oh, I ran out of room. Can I go down three? Sure, but what do I have to do? I gotta go over one to the left to follow the pattern. It has to be what? Up three over one. Up three over one. Then connect the line. Sorry, connect the dots. Make the line connect the dots. Like that. After you do that, the last thing I want you to do is do what? Shade in the triangle, going up three and over one. See how steep that line is? It's much steeper much steeper. Alright everybody, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to your graphing calculator and I want you guys to look at a pattern. I want you to hit y equals. I want you to type up 3 and an x like that. So hit y equals, type in 3x, and then I'd like you to check your table. I want you to check your table. So I want your table to look like this on the screen. Now, I want you right now to make this table in your journal. So in your journal right now, I want you guys to write y equals 3x. If you made the y equals 3x, and this is the table. You don't have to make it that long. Just start right here, and that should be enough. Just make that table of numbers right there. Okay? One to five, and then go up by three. Okay? Yeah, in your journal. All right. So here's what I want you guys to see. So this is what your journal should. Y equals 3x. And then what did you make? You made a table. Okay. And then we had what? 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, 4, 12, and you had 5 and a 15. This is what I want you guys to understand when you look at your table. If you take your y value and divide it by your x value, that will always give you your k value 
also known as your mean slope. This is specific to just direct variation. This is only if you have what? A zero and a zero. It's only if it's a direct variation problem. So indirect variation, how can you find your constant of variation? What do you have to do? Y over X. Let's check it. What's three divided by one? What's 6 divided by 2? 3. What's 9 divided by 3? 3. 12 divided by 4. 15 divided by 5. What's every single time you take your y value and divide it by your x value, what do you get? You get your constant of variation. That only works with direct variation. It's something you need to know. So please write it down. So everybody sees this table works, okay? 27 divided by 9. 24 divided by 8, 21 divided by 7, what are they all equal to? 3. Okay, but look what happens if I change my y-intercept from 0 to a 1. Look what happens to my table. What's 4 divided by 1? 4. That doesn't work, does it? What's 7 divided by 2? 3 and a half. That doesn't work. 10 divided by 3? 3.3333333 repeat. Okay? So, notice. This way, what would you have to do? You'd have to find the change in y over the change in x. What's the gap? 3. What's the gap here? 1. So what's the slope? 3 over 1. So we can't do the y divided by the x. You can only do it with what? With direct variation when your y-intercept is where? At 0. I'll, I'll hit the, I'm going to take my, take my grid line and put them on. Makes it a lot easier to see. There we go. So it only works at 0, 0. All right. So what I'd like you to do right now, I'd like you guys to go ahead and go ahead. I want you to do 5 and 6 on your own. We're going to check in in just a short minute. Help me. All right. If I'm going to graph this, where does everybody start at right here on this problem? The origin, that's right, we're going to start here at the origin. And from the origin, what does a negative 3 over 4 slope tell us to do? Down 3 and over 4 to the right. So we go down 3 over 4. 1, 2, 3. These are the space, remember, distance is the space between two points. We don't count the point as a space. We count the spaces. 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can also go up over 4 and up 3. And then you just connect it. Connect the dots. Just like you do in IHOP. <laughs> what well, at least I used to when I was a kid. They had <laughs> Little did I know it was going to help me as a math teacher one day. Connecting all those dots. Does everybody see the slope? Down 3 and over 4. Why is it negative? Because from left and right, what happens? It's going what? Down, Down from left to right. Okay? Alright. And here's the last one. Where are we starting once again? The origin. Alright. And from that point right there, what does that tell me to do? It tells me to go up 2 and over 5. Up 2 over 5. Since I don't have any room over here, I just have to trust the line. So right, no, is that right? No. no. Is that right? No. Now how about right there? No. All right, here we go. And you're like, well, that's, you made it too long, Mr. Here we go. Now, what do I want you to shade in? I want you to shade in this part. Up to over five. That's what I want you to shade in. I want you to see that step, that constant rate of change, that constant of variation. Okay. Now, what is our k value right here? What would be our k value? 2 over 5. Now, I want you guys to notice, even with fractions, check this out. If I have y equals, and I type in 2 divided by 5x, and I check my table, okay? Every single one of these answers will get you 2 divided by you know what decimal goes with 2 divided by 5? 4 tenths, which is 0.4. Watch this. 
intercept it or not. Take 2.8 divided by 7. Intercept it. Go ahead. 2.8 divided by 7. How much is 2.8 divided by 7. And once again, what do you get? 0 0.4. Every single time you take your y value and divide it by your x value, you get your constant variation. Okay? So, this is the next thing I want you guys to write down. Go back here. I want you guys to know how to use proportions. All right. I want you guys to write this down. This is how you solve it when it gives you what the y value and the x value are. Okay? So I want you guys to write down y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. And then what we're going to do right now is we're going to do problem number 7. We're going to do problem number 7 together. We're going to do it in our... I'm going to write it down. It says this. It says, if y equals negative 8 when x equals negative 2, find x when So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to label if y1 equals negative 8 when x1 equals negative 2, find x2 when y2 is 32. So write that down and then we'll solve it. All right, so now that I have this information, we're going to set this up, okay? We're going to set up y1 over x1 and set it equal to y2 over x2. So what is my y1 value? negative 8 right here. <coughs> and what is my x1 value? Negative 2. Okay. And it says find what? Find my x2 value when my y2 is 32. So you guys, is this how you set up? So I want you guys to set up and then see if you have any questions about how I, why I put the numbers where I put them. Okay, so set it up. Okay. I took my negative 8 and where did I put it? I put it in my y1 right there. I took my negative 2 and plugged it in for my x1. Now, what does this look like to everybody? Starts with a P. Get it on. A what? Proportion. That's right. This is a proportion. Okay. Are, are there any proportion problems on the TSI test? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So proportion. What do you guys think proportion? Do you guys remember how to solve proportion from like last year? All right, sometimes they call it the old butterfly method, the cross multiplication method, okay? Cross products are always equal in proportions. So let me show you why. Let's do a really easy one, ready? Does everybody agree that one half is equal to four over eight? Does that make sense? Like one half, one is half of two and four is half of eight. Pretty easy? Now look what happens when I cross multiply. What is eight times? What is 2 times 4? Eight. 8. So cross products and proportions are always going to be equal to each other every single time. That's, how you, that's why you're allowed to solve them that way. Okay. So right now, what is negative 8 times x2? That just becomes negative 8 tenths. Now you don't have to put the 2 there if you don't want to. You could, okay? And what's that equal to? 32 times Three. negative 2, which is negative 2. So what do we have to do to solve for our x2 value? We're going to have to divide both sides by equal. Negative 8. Alright, so what is our x2 value? Positive 2. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay, let's see if this works. What did I always tell you you were allowed to do to find your constant of variation? Just take your y value and divide it by your x value, and that gives you your k value. What is negative 8 divided by negative 2? What's negative 8 divided by negative 2? What's that equal to? 4. What is 32 divided by 8 equal to? 4. 
negative 8 divided by negative 2 is 4. 32 divided by 8 is also equal to 4. Can anybody tell me what equation goes with this problem? Look at y equals empty space. Does anybody know what my k value happens to be in this particular case inside the equation? Four is right! By the way, say it loudly. Four! There you go. All right. Christian, don't you understand? <laughs> you like to say that? No, I want to say it wasn't four, Mr. Christian. <laughs> Just joking. I knew you were going to say that. All right, so what's my equation for this? Y <laughs> equals 4x. What was my answer in this particular case? What was my x2 value equal to? Four. No, well, my x2 value is equal to eight. My constant of variation is equal to eight. Do I only do one problem or do more than one problem? More. More. Okay, that's another one. That's good. Here we go. Let's check, check, check it out. Okay, let's look at problem, just problem number eight, right here. Problem number eight. We'll show you how easy this is, okay? You have the long process in your journal. Now we're just going to do it really quick, really simple, really easy. Okay? What do we have to put? We have to put y over x. Okay? So can you guys do that for me? Take this y value, put it over that x value. Do that. So we're going to do what? We're going to put 45, right? Over 15. There's our y1, there's our x1. Okay? Equals. Now remember, it's always what? Y over x. So it says find x. Put x down here when y is a 15. That's how you set it up. Okay. There's your proportion. So once we have our proportion, what are we allowed to do? Cross multiply. Let's do that. So when we cross multiply, we're multiplying 45 times x equals 225. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do I get 225? What's 15 times 15? 225. There we go. And then what are we going to divide both sides? Divide by 45, divide by 45, okay. equals 5. That's what x would be. Now that's the answer to this particular problem. But if I said, hey, what's y equals a times x? If I said, what's that? Does anybody know what I could do to find my k? value that would go right in there. I could, I could look at a table, right? Okay. But what, what, is, what is y over x always equal to? Okay. What's 45 divided by 15? 45 divided by 15 Three. equals 3. Check this out. What do we find our x value equal right there? We find it equal to a what? What's 15 divided by 5 also equal to? That means my equation would be y equals 3x. It didn't ask us for the equation this time. I just want you to know how easy it is to find the equation. Okay? Y equals 3x. Y, what did I do? I took the y value and I divided by the x value. We're going to do one more problem, and then what you're going to do is you're going to finish doing all the way through problem number 12. We're doing one more problem. We're doing problem 9, and that's it. And the rest, your homework for the night is to get through problem what number? 12. 12. Basically, three problems. I know. The one over and over again. So here we go. We're going to do y over, remember, it's y over x. So how am I going to start this? Negative 4 over 2 equals, this time, what are we solving for? And what's my x value? Negative 6. There you go. Go ahead and set that up. We're going to cross multiply. I'm sorry, I'm going to do that. Alright, so when I cross multiply, what is 2 times y? 2y, very good. What is negative 4 times negative 6? Ooh, a negative times a negative is a positive. So make it a positive. 24, then we divide both sides by 2, and y equals 12. Now, if I said, what's your constant of variation? 
what could I do to find my constant variation? Just take negative 4 and divide it by what? 2. So my constant variation would be negative 2. So my, my equation would be y equals negative 2 x. And that's what you do. If this is confusing, watch the video. You can mute me and just watch the math. All right? That's the best way to shut Mr. Demude up. Just watch the video, click me on mute. All right? Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of direct variables.